and welcome back to another CAFCast. Today we're carrying on with our Do Coin series. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying the videos. Um, I'm doing my best to make sure that it is easy as possible to start mining Dogecoin because I do strongly believe in the cryptocurrency as I'm sure you guys can appreciate because um, it is a whole lot of fun which, which is probably what's brought you to these videos. So hello. Um, this is going to be a bit more of an entry level mining video today because we're going to be talking about a new piece of software that was released relatively recently called Cuda Manager. Now, Cuda Miner is the software that I have been running for uh, mining since I started back in uh, December when Dogecoin first was created. And it's a very, very good piece of software. But you do need to have um, a good grasp on how to set up configuration files um, and your graphics card and how to manage your graphics card um, and all those sort of bits and pieces. Now, there's nothing stopping you from doing overclocking if you know how to do it. Um, you're more than welcome to. Uh, and if you would like a separate video on how to manage an overclocked graphics card, then I'm more than happy to do that if it's going to help you guys. But today, we're going to be looking at a piece of software that takes a lot of the complicated stuff out of CUDA Miner and makes it a lot easier, called CUDA Manager. Now, this piece of software originally was set up to provide a, a fail-safe system for your mining. When you're mining and uh, a website goes down or a stratum gets disconnected, then uh, you can lose some precious mining time. Um, as you guys can see here, I've actually uh, been talking to the guys who uh, who made this um, this piece of uh, software, which is really good. Um, I had a couple of issues that I wanted to just make sure were absolutely uh, not going to cause you guys any problems at all. So we'll, we'll cover that in, in more detail uh, a little later on. But just to finish what I was uh, what I was talking about, originally this was made as a failsafe because when uh, yeah when your stratum went down, that then all your mining just stopped uh, until that stratum went back up again. The really cool thing about this piece of software is you can have multiple stratums installed on the uh, on your mining software, and if one fails, it will go to your failsafe. Um, so if your entire mining pool goes down, uh, like Doghouse did recently, a couple of days, uh, it went down for about, I think it was about sort of 18 hours. Um, they had a massive DDoS attack and uh, the um, it was pretty pretty difficult for them and it was pretty difficult for us because we all had to go and scramble around to try to find uh, different miners. Um, and I lost, I lost probably about a day's worth of mining from uh, from doing that, unfortunately. So um, this, is a, this is a really good piece of software to take care of those sort of problems. And it also makes it a lot less complicated as well to uh, to deal with. So um, let's have a look at this. Basically, um, this software is managed automatically. Um, it manages your mining, sorry, automatically. Um, and I'll be able to show you guys in, in more detail what it does uh, and how it does that. But just to go through the, the basic kind of bits and pieces that it, that it actually does. Um, it supports the failover management that I was just talking to you guys about. It allows you to easily create new miners, uh, and that's as in uh, mi like set up miners to, to run on different pools. Um, it also supports a failsafe fan controller, which will increase the graphics card fans um, to uh, to 100% if there are any problems at all, and then it will uh, send them back and uh, and disconnect for you, which you can actually enable and disable. That's the thing that I wanted to double check with the with the guys here over at Cuda Manager, um, and they were really helpful, and uh, they made sure that I was very clear on on everything before I made this video because I wanted to make sure that I was giving the correct information to you guys. Um, it also supports uh, ghosting mode, GPU temperatures, minor logs, overview, protective calling, www. So like, you know, basically everything that you could possibly want. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to download this software. Now, I'm sure you guys know which version of Windows you're running and chances are you are running 64-bit seeing as most of the systems these days do run 64. But if anybody out there is still running 32-bit, um, then you have the option of running the x86 bundle. Um, the best way to find that out, just to make sure this video is nice and straightforward for you guys, if you right click on your my computer, your computer in the start bar and you click properties, uh, the first thing that it will say on the system here is uh, whether or not you're running a 32-bit system or a 64-bit system, just here in system type. So my system I'm running is a 64-bit operating system. It's Windows 7 64-bit. 
so I know from that that I can run the x64 bundle. If you are, if you don't have that, if you have a 32-bit system, it doesn't matter. It's absolutely fine. But you need to run the x86 bundle. So click on the correct one. Once you've done that, set the download going. Uh, and this one, it looks like, is going to be a lot faster than it was last time in our previous mining video, which is good. Now that that's been downloaded, we'll pop that up and we'll head on back to the actual Reddit site. If you guys do have any trouble with this, this community, this CUDA manager community is actually really good and they're all a bunch of really nice guys who were who were very helpful in uh, in getting things uh, going for me and uh, alleviating my worries. So I'm sure they'll do the same for you if you have any worries at all, then you can always come here and you can submit a new post. Now it's actually downloaded the software for me and I've extracted it onto my desktop here. And this is what it looks like. You have the miners folder where it actually keeps the uh, the files of uh, CUDA miner. And if we have a look in uh, in the CUDA miner itself, you can see that those files, this one, this one, this one, which is the only three that we actually need. The out is uh, the sort of like um, dump of information that comes out of CUDA miner when you use it. And the stress test is, is the file that we set up last time in our new mining video. That is all that it takes onto the system. So you know it's pretty clean. There's not really much um, that it kind of like hides from you, which is really useful. Um, and it's it's a really nice clean piece of software. So this is it. This is what it looks like. The actual miner itself is at the bottom here. Um, and we have the other configuration bits and pieces at the top here. Um, now, what you need to do is a couple of things to set it up. Now, you could, if you don't have CUDA Miner installed already, you could enter the details in manually. You can give your miner a nickname. You can uh, type your stratum in, which it obviously explains to you exactly what you're looking for there. And you know when you go to your pool, it tells you whether you're running a low difficulty or a high difficulty pool. It will tell you which miner to use. Um, and you also obviously have the worker name and the password. You can run a CPU assist uh, if you want to, but I would recommend leaving everything on default um, unless you know really what you're doing. And then you can enter your configuration file uh, settings here, which is obviously like, like uh, skipping auto-tune. If you're running CUDA Manager and you're watching this video to try to get a bit of uh, basic support, then it's probably best that you leave it to be doing auto-tuning. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be showing people how it runs with auto-tuning because, uh, well, sorry, without auto-tuning, with, with me setting some manual uh, settings in here because I want to make sure that these videos uh, help us sort of the broader scope of people as possible. But if you don't understand about that and you, uh, you feel like you just want to get mining and just start earning those doge, then all you need to do is uh, just leave that blank and it will uh, it will do everything else for you which is again which is why this is a really cool piece of software but the other really cool thing about this is that i can import miners and what i can do is i can go back in through here to our desktop to our new cuda miner folder and i can actually take the bat file that we created manually ourselves and open that and it will import all the information for us and add it into uh, into our miner so if i press add miner to manager you can see here that that has added that information. Now, as I said to you guys before, one of the really good things about CUDA Manager is the fact that it allows you to do a failsafe. Uh, and in that, you can have a second mining pool that you run uh, to uh, to fa fall over to if the first miner that you use uh, doesn't work. So for example, here I'm using Doge House for the first mining pool. You might want to use Rapid Hash or Fast Pool or um, Team Doge or DogeChain.info. I think they've got a mining pool as well. There's loads of different ones that you can use, and I'm sure you guys are aware if you've watched the videos before. If we go over to the Dogecoin subreddit, you can go through to the mining section here, and uh, you can go to the mining subreddit or the dog pool list or, or, or whatever. Um, we can click on that, and we can go and we can find out about all the different pools that we can run. doesn't really matter which one you choose, because again, this is not the one that you're going to be using all the time. This is the failsafe. This is the sort of the standard one that you that you use. If you want a recommendation for one to, to run, I would probably say that the Doge Chain one is probably the best one for your failsafe because it's actually the uh, the mining pool of the official Doge Coin blockchain, which is where all the actual uh, the actual blockchain itself is is kept. And look, 
at time of recording, we're at block 91818. So uh, you need to get on mining now because the uh, the rewards are about to half. But it's fine. You'll still be getting Doge. Don't worry. Um, so yeah, this is a this is a nice little simple pool, um, and it's got 2.07 giga hash, 3,052 active miners. So you could set that up as a fail safe. Um, the one really important thing to make sure that you guys are aware of is not to use the same password for different pools because if, uh, if a pool is hacked for any reason then you will obviously lose uh, your control of both your mining pools and someone could come in and they could just take all of your the doge that you have in that account away before you have a chance to automatically deposit it into a mining wallet which would be a real shame but anyway once you've got all that that uh, information set up you can add your uh, your your information, so it'll be you know something like Doug uh, in chain info or something like that. I don't actually know what the what the stratum is for that one because I don't use it personally. Set up your welcome name, set up your password, and then you can add that miner as well. Uh, this miner is just, oh that's because we haven't changed the name. So there we go. So I've set that up to be our second one. And now what will happen is it will it will retry this one for the amount of tries that we set. So at the moment it's got three, which is obviously you know pretty standard, which makes sense. And then if it can't connect to that stratum within three times over the course of 45 seconds, so once every 15 seconds, then it will fail over to this one and start using that one. And it will carry on using that one until either that one falls over and it will try the first one again, or you can stop mining and you can start it again on the first one. Now, you can obviously you can move these up. And down to uh, to your preference, and obviously it will start from the, the first one as well. Um, but the other thing to bear in mind is that, as I said to you guys before, this uh, piece of software also has a mining failsafe uh, as well, which is really good. Um, what you can do is you can set it up to it is by default enabled protective calling, uh, which as you can see here, could enable will increase your fan speed if your GPU overheats. Um, now, if you are not running any kind of um, really decent software uh, for your cooling, like for example, I'm running AI Suite to control my uh, the main fans of my computer because that actually works really well with the temperature nodes that I have on my particular motherboard. It's a, a Sabertooth Z87, and uh, Google that if you uh, if you want to know what I'm using. It's very good, um, and I'm running GPU tweak to monitor my uh, my GPU uh, now. So I, I'm I'm safe. I know that I've got everything set up and configured automatically. But what you can do if you're unsure or if you're running a laptop or anything like that, you can enable protective calling. Um, and if I just maximize that again, if you go through into your advanced options, what you can do is you can set up temperatures for those fans to basically kick in. And, and, and all that will do um, is it will increase the fan speed to 100% until the uh, the temperature has been brought down past the uh, the point of uh, of the protection activation temperature and um, which is set as standard at 80 degrees now that's all very very good and uh, i strongly recommend using that if you uh, if you don't know too much about you know setting cooling if you don't have any anything to to run manually to set your uh, your cooling then it's probably a good idea to use that um, but if you do know about your fans and you know about your cooling then obviously you can dis dis uh, disable that and i obviously have disabled that um, which is absolutely fine so what you can do is you can hit the start miner button and as you guys can see it's running the the, the mining for me automatically um, it's really good it actually has, as you can see as well, it has real-time GPU uh, temperature monitoring as well. So that will uh, be able to tell you whether or not the temperature uh, increases too much. Um, and we'll just mine away as normal, as CUDA miner does. Um, but it has a failsafe built into it that if your stratum goes down, if the pool that you're using goes down, then you have the ability to uh, change over to a different pool automatically. So it is a really good piece of software, and I do strongly recommend it. Um, if you are a new user or if you're an old user, it's it's still you know it's still really good, still really really useful. So thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope this video has been very clear, and I hope it's helped you understand uh, what you can use this for and how to run it. If you have any problems at all or you're a bit confused, then feel free to go to the, the uh, CUDA Manager subreddit that I showed you on this video today, or drop a comment in the bottom below. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you all very shortly. Take care. You've been watching the Gafcast. We hope you had enjoyed the show. Don't forget to check out all of our other videos. Oh.
Now and be sure to subscribe to us If you like what you see That way I'll know to make more And that you really like me So You've been watching the Kefcast We hope you have enjoyed the show Don't forget to check out All of our other videos